So the best choice here is E, the least likely cost for this particular finding is schwannoma. Finding here is not as obvious as in other case. If you magnify the image, you can see there is a dorsal compression or anterior displacement of the spinal cord. Now on this stir image, you can see there's increased T2 signal that represent either myelomalacia or acute core edema. Now it looks as if that there is a cystic lesion posteriorly causing the compression of the spinal cord with an imperceptible border. So you do want to give contrast to make sure that there's not a lesion. And after contrast, you see there's no enhancement. Therefore, this is not schwannoma. For intradural extramedullary mass, top two would be schwannoma versus meningioma. Both of them should enhance. Even if you are thinking about cystic schwannoma, you should expect to see some enhancing component or enhancing nodule. So therefore, I will eliminate choice E. Now for choice D, you do have a finding of myelomalacia or abnormal core signal, but that is a sequelae from this particular finding. So therefore, D is not the best answer. For this particular case, either a dorsal compression of the spinal cord or anterior displacement of spinal cord in the thoracic spine. Think about the three entity, ventral core herniation, dorsal arachnoid cyst, or dorsal arachnoid web. So first pathology, ventral core herniation. The idea is that if you have a dural defect anteriorly in the thoracic cord, because of the thoracic core tend to be anteriorly positioned due to kyphosis. So when you have a defect leakage of a CSF, there's a pressure gradient. So by proximity, the spinal cord will act like a plug, plug in this defect, gradually herniate through the defect, causes ventral core herniation. In this older article from AJNR from 1998, there's a nice illustration of the case that has a severe ventral core herniation through the dural defect. And the dural defect, of course, is difficult to see on MRI, but they see that doing surgery, you can see a defect with core herniation through the defect. This is a newer article from Radiographic from 2008. There's a beautiful drawing about this dural defect, ventral core plug or herniation, and on the cross-sectional uh, image, sometimes you can see this deformity of the spinal cord. But often, it's not that easy to distinguish between these three entities, in my experience. The second entity is dorsal arachnoid cyst, and this is exactly what happened in this case. The patient had a surgery, so the arachnoid cyst was taken off. The core compression has resolved. To make the diagnosis of arachnoid cyst, sometimes you can do CT myelogram. And in this case, we actually did not do that, but this is another example of a arachnoid cyst. When you give intrathecal contrast, notice that the arachnoid cyst uh, usually does not opacify uh, as quickly as the subarachnoid space. Arachnoid cyst, though, has a variable communication with subarachnoid space. So if you waited too long, sometimes the cyst will become filled in and it will become invisible to the adjacent uh, subarachnoid space because of contrast. So the key here is that when you do your CT myelogram after injection of intrathecal contrast, make sure to image a patient early. So you may see this non-filled in that's consistent with arachnoid cyst. The last entity, which is pretty rare from AJNR, a nice article about dorsal arachnoid web. You can see there's this linear end that's going across the posterior aspect of the spinal cord causes core compression. And they dub that look like a scalpel, the scalpel side. Post up, you can see that uh, the little band or the web has been resected and the core compression has resolved. Notice that it looks quite similar to arachnoid cyst or ventral core herniation. So you're probably not going to come across a case like this in the general radiology core exam. But in case you do, if you see this experience in the thoracic spine, ventral core displacement or dorsal core compression, think about this three entity. That's all for this spine case number 11. Thanks for your attention. Good luck on your board exam.